making a video to show how to replace the ribbon cable latch with no soldering required for the style of ribbon port connector. This connector is used on all DS, DSi, 3DS, and 2DS consoles. This ribbon port is a four port that is used for the touchscreen and circle pad on the new 3DS, which is what I'm working on in this video. That being said, you can find these socket connectors used on DS's, DSI's, 3DS's, and 2DS models for additional components like the microphone, backlight, and 3D ribbon cables. Most of the time these latches break at one of the corners where the latch grabs onto the socket to snap into place. As you can see in the video, the latch I'm working on broke in this way. These latches are extremely brittle, plastic, so it doesn't take much to break them. Once they are broken, unfortunately, there won't be enough pressure on the cable in the socket because it relies on the latch to push the cable into the bottom four pins. And then the connector doesn't make good connection and it won't work. So let's get into replacing this broken connector on this particular board. What you want to do first is remove the old latch. Usually these just fall out of place so it doesn't really take much elbow grease to get them out of the socket. Um, on this particular one I'm just going to use a pair of tweezers and pull it forward. After removing the latch, I have direct access to the four pins. I need to bend these pins slightly up. I prefer to use an X-Acto knife to do this as it works really well. You need to be careful when bending these pins. If you bend them too far, they will snap or break at the solder joint on the board. They only need to be moved two to four millimeters in order to get a new latch in place. You also want to make sure that the pins remain as straight as possible. You can see on this board that whoever damaged this bent the top pin slightly down. I'll have to straighten this pin out after replacing the latch. Here I'm going to test fit the latch and as you can see it doesn't quite fit under the pins. So what I need to do is take it back out and then bend the pin slightly more. So I'm going to use an X-Acto knife to bend these pins up slightly more so the latch can fit into the socket. I purposefully left this in the video. As you can see, I bent that first pin way too far. If you look at the pin near the back of the socket, there's a stress mark where it bent. This is how you break these pins. Luckily this one didn't break and I'm able to salvage it. Keep in mind that these pins are tiny. They only look larger because I'm filming under a microscope. So it doesn't take a lot of movement or force to bend these way too far.
Now I can see if the latch will fit under the pins. You want to be careful when using tweezers as if you squeeze them too hard, the latch will be damaged. As I said earlier, the plastic used on these is very brittle and cannot take much force without breaking. Take your time here. You'll see that I had to adjust my tweezers and how I was holding the latch several times. It may help to go in at a slight angle. Line up the four pins and slide it in place. You cannot use force here, so if it doesn't slide into place effortlessly, stop and get your X-Acto knife and bend the pins up a little more and try it again. Once you have the latch lined up and all four pins come through it, you can go ahead and close the latch. Once the latch is installed, you now can bend those pins back to their original location. I like to bend each pin individually. You have to be very careful when pushing down on these pins. It will not take much force to bend them back into their original location, and if you push too hard, it will crack the latch that you just installed. In order to bend the pins from the very front, you need to have a tool to hold the latch down. Otherwise, you'll flex the latch and it'll just open up and you'll end up bending the pins out of orientation. So what you see me here doing is I'm holding the latch shut and then I'm bending each pin individually. Now that we have the latch installed and the pins bent back in the original location, I'm going to go ahead and straighten this top pin. Once I'm done straightening the top pin, I'm going to go ahead and test the latch. The latch should open with some resistance and should close with some resistance. If the latch is really loose or doesn't click close, then the pins are not in their original location and you need to bend them down slightly more. Congratulations, if you made it this far into the video, you probably have successfully replaced the latch in the socket. A couple things to consider. If you do a latch replacement and the device plugging into the socket still doesn't work, you should verify that the device is functioning and check the ribbon cable for breaks. If you know it's a working device, then that means the socket needs to be replaced. This requires soldering and is much more difficult to do. Hopefully this video will help others replace this latch. You don't always have to replace the entire socket, and soldering this socket into place is a much more difficult repair to do. Once the latch has been replaced, you want to test fit the ribbon cable under the socket. For this particular console, this ribbon cable is for the touchscreen. Prior to replacing the latch, the touchscreen would work, but it would randomly stop working or have these phantom touches that would show up. After replacing the latch, it's fully working and there's no longer any problems. For other repair resources and to see what I have or am working on currently, you can visit my website at tzerp.com. Thanks for watching and good luck with the repair.